Say hey everybody, it's Ozzy again from Three Monkeys, Amps and Three Monkeys Solderless, and uh, welcome to my uh, my personal page where I like to do some goofy projects over the weekends to keep myself sane and have a little fun with you guys. So um, for this weekend, what I decided to do was uh, build this. So this is a, uh, a Jose preamp pedal um, that's based on that Jose amplifier that we went through and, and showed you all the insides of and everything. So this is gonna be a build journal where I'm taking you through from the very beginnings to this, and then there's a demo as well of it. So um, I hope you enjoy watching it this weekend. The weather here is kind of crappy, uh, or was pretty crappy. Look like it looks like it's kind of clearing up out there. But uh, I hope you enjoy it if you got nothing better to do. And uh, so let's begin. All right, so we're back at the table here, and uh, I, I got a delivery of some stuff here, um, some parts. You can see we got again the IEC, uh, some uh, solder tabs some tube sockets, some potentiometers, jack, some grounding lugs, diodes, more solder tabs, another jack, a couple more potentiometers, fuse holder, some more solder tabs, this here box, um, and the transformer. And uh, some of you might recognize this project from a, from a previous video on the table as well, which is this scaled down little pedalized um, tube version of the uh, a tube pedal version of the three monkeys sock monkey and I built this to kind of go along with a um, you know something like an IR an IR generator like the two notes that you can put this on your pedal board and uh, give yourself a, you know a complete system that could go out to the front of house without actually having a real you know sort of standard traditional guitar amplifier um, and what I thought I'd do today is kind of expand out on this idea and build another one of these into this box. But since we've gotten a lot of um, attention on a previous video, well, compared to the other videos anyway, on the, uh, the Jose modded Marshall. So what I figured I'd build here is a version of the Jose modded Marshall in a preamp. Um, and it'll be available for two purposes to go into a, you know, something like a two notes cab simulator, like the two notes torpedo, or you could plug it into the line in on a, like, let's say a Marshall amp. And if you've got, you know, a stock Marshall, now you've got yourself a, a Jose that you can plug in as well and won't have to sort of take apart that, that nice amp you've got to uh, mod the hell out of it. So stick with us and uh, I'm going to go through building this thing out into this case. And I hope you find it interesting. So uh, let's get started in a minute. Okay, so uh, to start off, we've obviously got our pink drink. Um, we're going to start off by deciding how we want to construct the box, right? And to do that, we're going to use paper because I always say it's better to, you know, figure out, you know, how how you want it built, draw it all out on paper. And that way, you know when you come into actually cutting into your box, drilling all your holes and what have you, that you know that you have the best chance possible of making it through the project without incurring some sort of, a, of an issue, be it relate, most likely related to layout, um, that prevents you from completion and then you have to throw out your box and start all over again and hope that you don't make more mistakes. So it's always best to draw things out on paper. On top of that, it's always good to, to build upon previous things that you have proven to be workable, right? So in this case, we have an advantage that we've sort of already built something similar um, to what we're trying to do right now, which is this, you know, the three, the uh, sock monkey uh, preamp here. Um, what we were able to prove with the sock monkey preamp is that we were with this sort of a layout where all the parts were internal, external, in relationship to one another, we were end up with a, a, you know, an amplifier that was stable, as in there wasn't oscillating going on from crosstalk or from the RF signature, that there wasn't uh, a lot of issues with noise. In fact, it was extremely quiet. So the positioning of the grounding um, or the type of grounding that was used was, was, uh, was very good um, the relationship the transformers to the tubes to everything else the where everything was lead dressed out it all seemed to be proven to be a um, you know a good idea a good functioning circuit where the input jack and output jack was 
all that kind of stuff. So I think we can start off by copying the layout on this particular um, unit right here. Now where we're going to differ from it is, and like I said, you should always learn from what you've done prior, right? Do an evaluation, what worked, what didn't work, what was useful, what was not useful, um, what was superfluous, what could be added, all these kind of issues and ideas. And on this unit, what I basically learned, and I took a gamble to begin with, was uh, how much signal would I need to drive something, right? Um, what things am I going to want to drive? Am I going to want to drive a very long cable? Am I going to want to drive some, you know, effects? What am I going to want to drive? And so I basically came up with the idea, well, let's just be safe than sorry, and we'll put in a secondary cathode follower after the tone controls and after the master, so to speak, that we could use to drive something uh, that required a large signal to drive it. And as it turned out, you know, for my functions and for, I think, the majority of things, this is not necessary. So in our case for building this Jose, uh, I think we're going to eliminate that secondary cathode follower and we're going to uh, sort of scale down to only two tube sockets on this particular unit. <clears throat> um, after all, let's say if we were to plug this into, which is the plan, plug this into the line in on that 100 watt Marshall that we've got upstairs that we're using in the slave experiments, if we were to plug this into that line in, um, well, where does that line in usually derive its signal from in a stock amp? It derives itself from the tone stack that's attached to the cathode follower coming off of the master volume, right? We saw that in the Jose sort of uh, reveal <clears throat> that the Jose master was, you know, connected or not connected, depending upon where the switch was, to the phase inverter. So there wasn't another boost stage necessary. So in this case, we're not going to add that cathode follower. Um, and that should simplify things down a little bit as well. Another, you know, another another stage, another socket, uh, the, the associated components with that socket will all be eliminated and it should be an easier build as well. So what else do, are we going to learn that was good? Well, the position of, this, of these potentiometers was good. Um, in the case of um, the Jose, there, you know, we're going to plan out uh, exactly, you know, how many potentiometers we're going to use, but I think they're going to be in this place right here. So let's uh, go ahead and grab our paper and uh, let's start. Um, let's start kind of uh, putting the whole thing together. So I've got, or rather, drawing it out. So I've got my ruler, I got my pen, got my box. So I'm going to go ahead and trace the perimeter of the box here. Um, there we go. Okay. Now, th this is a, sort of a thing I like to do. I don't know if everybody else would feel the same way about it, but what I like to do is draw things that are let's say permanent, like the outline of the chassis or the outlines of different things that I know are not moving in pen, and then I'll use pencil inside of that in case I want to do some changes. And uh, it works out good. You don't end up throwing out a lot of pieces of paper. All right, so let's first start off with um, the transformer. Now that worked out to be a really good place for the transformer, nice and tidy. Um, very short leads to uh, the fuse, uh, very short leads you know, to the uh, rectifier, um, good place for it all in general, you know, and far, about as far away as we could almost get from uh, the critical components that are more susceptible to noise. So we're just going to go ahead and put this back in there, which was in that place, which is relatively easy to determine because it's just in the corner, as close as you can get to the four corners, so to speak. You know, and again, this is, you know, this blueprint doesn't have to be as precise as if you were going to go and, ha and hand this off to a CNC uh, programmer to go ahead and start, you know, cutting out these things because we're still going to have to transfer all of these dimensions and things onto the chassis. This is to give our mind a chance to work out where everything is and if it's a in a good place or not. So next we're going to go ahead and put in the, uh, the potentiometers. And the center line of the potentiometers looks like it was about Oh, five eighths off the edge of the box. So we're going to go and get our ruler and five eighths. And with the pencil now, I'm going to pencil, start using the pencil now. Pencil in our lines. All right. Um, and this will be sort of the line that all the potentiometers ride on. And what was the spacing here? Well, it looks like we used what? An inch and a quarter. Now, 
in my mind, uh, there was, you know, this looks, it's nice for this layout, but uh, we may have to squish these down a little bit as there's going to be some more um, potentiometers, I believe. So in that note, let's determine what the controls are going to be. Now going back to the Jose, if we remember correctly, we had going across um, the amplifier, we had what, a presence control? Well, that's not needed, being that there is no, um, you know, output transformer, global negatives, uh, sort of uh, feedback uh, circuit, no phase inverter. Um, that will all be um, utilized in the amp that this is plugged into. So if you were to go and say plug what we're about to build into the line in on that 100 watt Marshall, the presence control on that 100 watt Marshall would in fact still be working, right? Because you're going into an area, you're going into the phase inverter and the phase inverter is where that global negative network is, is set up. So the, for all intents and purposes, the presence control for this will actually be on the amplifier that's plugged into. All right, so we're not gonna need the presence control. The next one over would have been what? The Jose Master. Okay, so we're gonna put that in. And we got ourselves, a, this is the one that I like to use, the pot that I like to use for the Jose Master. Um, it's, I got it from CE Distribution. It's a Borns pot. It's a dual 500K double element. You can see the two elements, push, pull, double, pull, double, throw. Um, and this is about the only one you're ever gonna find unless you, uh, I guess, start hunting around in different swap meets and ham shows trying to find an original, um, you know, Alan Bradley or Clara set. So this is the one I recommend. So anyway, so we got the Jose Master, then we have the normal Marshall Fair of uh, tone controls. So we have the bass, the mid, the treble, right? Then we had um, on the Jose amplifier, the Marshall, that Jose built that we showed, there were three volume controls, right? One that had the bright cap, one that didn't, that was for just that isolated, normal sort of clean sound, and then there was the preamp um, volume pot that was in the uh, repurposed uh, input. So in our case, since we're simplifying the circuit to just be that one Jose channel, the, the money channel, so to speak, we're not gonna need that middle potentiometer that was controlling the normal channel. So we're gonna have two preamp um, controls. So we're gonna call the first one uh, volume with the bright cap, so volume BC, and then we're gonna have the pre-volume. Okay, so that we're gonna, in total, have the Jose Master, the bass mid, the treble, the volume control with the bright cap and the preamp volume. And that gives us at one, two, three, four, five, six. So six, and we have here one, two, three, four, five. So I think it might be a good idea to kind of compress these a little bit in terms of size. Um, now we have a potentiometer that we're gonna use and this is a Borns pot as well. As you can see, if you went um, to kind of, let's, let's take out two of them and we'll put them next to each other right and get them touching one another what's the distance between the two it's just a tiny bit underneath an inch so i think if we do an inch space between the two um we'll work out with a really sort of um a good layout so i'm going to go ahead now <clears throat> and start laying out where the um potentiometers go and we'll start by finding the middle since there were six of these this would be sort of the middle right there right so we're going to find the middle I'm using that trick from the building vid so you don't have to use math the uh what was it how to install a Floyd Rose uh to find the middle with a ruler and that's the middle right there right and in this case um the middle itself yeah, it was right there. We're also going to skew everything over a little bit. Um, so from the middle, let's say we're going to go over and let's use a pot and put it in place. Right? We can even do it this way if you wanted to. Because we're going to bias everything to one side as much as we can. We can make this right here the first pot position. Right? And then we're going to use an inch between the two and we're going to go out for six of these. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so those will be our six potentiometers, leaving space over here for 
the input jack, or rather, excuse me, output jack. So I'm going to go ahead and draw these guys in using our circle maker. We're going to find our appropriate hole. I think this one on the end here looks pretty good. There goes an elephant. And uh, we're going to draw in our pots. All right. So there you have them. <clears throat> and then we're going to draw in our jack right here. Right? This will be where our, our jack is. And uh, our tab like so. So that's our input jack. Right here, we've got a transformer input jack. Now we're going to put in the sockets, right? And now where were the sockets located? This worked out pretty well. So it looks like from the end of the case, it's uh, two and seven eighths to the middle line. So let's go ahead and mark that in. Right there. And up here we're gonna mark in the line again. Two and seven eighths. Gonna connect our lines. And that'll be our line for our sockets. The first socket, that position worked out pretty good as well, is about an inch off the edge. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And the distance between the two was also pretty good as well, which turned out to be, what, an inch and a quarter. So we'll go an inch and a quarter off of that for our second socket. All right, so those are our two sockets. Now let's go ahead and lay those in. And it looks like um, just one down. Well, the base is a little bit bigger. I think we're going to use the same one as the potentiometer to draw in our socket. So that's our preamp socket. Right, and this here is our cathode follower. Okay, so that's great. Um, now we're over here. We're going to have our input jack, right? So let's uh, put in the body of the jack here. Right. Okay. Um, now let's go ahead and look at um, the interior. Um, we have our. IEC power input, and that looks like it is located just about, oh, an inch and a quarter off the edge there. Let's go ahead and lay that in. So that's going to be our IEC port. Um, we have our IEC right here. I always call it an IEC. I just call it a power inlet, or AC power inlet, right? So that fills up right about from here to right about here. <clears throat> and then we're going to put in our fuse. we got our little fuse holder here. And that one looks like it is located at two and three quarters off the edge there. So right about here. All right, so we'll mark our IEC in. Okay. And that looks like everything that we're going to need. <clears throat> so I think um, all in all, this should work out pretty good as we've done the internals. So you can see on this unit here, um, should be very similar, right? We have our rectifier and power supply as well as filtering in an area that we know exists if we copy this exactly. Um, and then we'll have our space for our little um, tag strips to assemble our circuit in sort of the flying lead style. Um, we've got plenty of room for our input jack. We've got plenty of room for our output jack. So I'm fairly confident that we should be able to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> start drilling the amplifier chassis out for it. Um, so uh, I think we'll leave it here, and next we'll go through marking the chassis and drilling it out for the parts.